Yes, Gerald. Yes, you can. Okay, we can start. So thank you yeah, for this, have, uh, to participate. Where, to... where we have only 12 participants now, 13. Do you want to wait two, three more minutes? What do you want? No, I think okay. we, we, we can start because uh, after uh, they can, they, uh, uh, they can see on YouTube, it's okay. So okay. it's uh, so th thank you very much, uh, uh, Xavier, to continue to to help uh, Myanmar people and giving this uh, lecture very important about uh, uh, basic uh, an anesthesia. So it's uh, the third lecture you 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 give, and uh, I think you you will give uh, more lecture in oh, the wow. future. So thank you very much to to continue this. Thank uh, you, Jerome. Thank you. So we go on uh, what we have done so two, three weeks ago before I went to uh, Norway for holidays uh, and to my parents. We spoke about the upper limb and now we are going on to speak about the lower limb nerve blocks. And I will speak a little bit about uh, the facial plane blocks, which uh, which could be very, very interesting, interesting for you uh, in, um, in Myanmar. Uh, right, okay. So about the um, lower limb, it's not as easy as the um, uh, the upper limb we have seen last time because we the the the, the lower limb is depending on two uh, parts: the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. So you have the anterior part and the posterior uh, part to um, to give good blocks. So uh, the lumbar plexus, very interesting for us, is the, the ilioinguinal nerve and genital femoral nerve for all the uh, um, uh, hernia rough reapers, um, but also for all the trauma you're confronted with, uh, the lateral femoral cutaneous operator nerve and the femoral nerve at the anterior side. And then we will have a look at the posterior uh, part of the uh, lower limb, all the sacral plexus giving for as very important the sciatic nerve. So as you can see here, it's not a very, very easy anatomy compared to the uh, upper limb. Um, also, when we look from the skin to the muscles and then to the uh, bones, uh, you see that the distribution of all the nerve for the uh, lower limb is, uh, is complex. So you need to have some idea before giving blocks what you want to reach. Uh, it's so more difficult than the, um, the upper limb. And I see here some colleagues not very really used to give a local anesthesia, um, giving the wrong block and it, it, it won't work. Uh, you have here uh, also the distribution to the bones. And very important to know as uh, the distribution of the very distal nerves at the foot. It's very important to know when you give distal blocks. We will speak about it uh, at the end. And I will begin with the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve is a very big one, difficult to miss. We see with ultrasound and with landmarks. Um, it's a very big nerve, and uh, uh, always remember that you will see the vein, the artery, and the nerve from median to lateral. Uh, um, these are uh, very important landmarks when you don't have ultrasound or when you have ultrasound to uh, localize the nerve. Uh, it's very important also to know that when we will have a good femoral block, it will extend also to the saphenous uh, branches. And uh, the saphenous branches are very, uh, very important also for uh, uh, the uh, middle side of the ankle. Uh, um, so the landmarks are, you can give it very, very easily with paresthesia, just localizing the femoral arteria uh, and the needle will be one centimeter at the lateral side of the artery and one centimeter under the inguinal ligament. Uh, um, and the patient will feel some paresthesia in the knee, in the patella. And when you have a, a, a neurostimulator, uh, 
you will see in the dancing patella, which is the good sign of the good position of the needle. Um, but when you do that only with an intramuscular needle, and uh, we have done it many, many years, it works. So if you have ultrasound, much better, but with your uh, actual situation, you can give this block safely without ultrasound. So remember, you will feel under the fingers, under your fingers, the femoral artery, you one centimeter lateral, one centimeter under the uh, uh, angular ligament, and you will find the femoral nerve. And when you have uh, an ultrasound machine, it's very easy at the lateral side of the femoral artery, you will see the triangle with all the uh, branches of the femoral nerve. It's an easy blow. The needle is quite easy to uh, be seen on the screen. But then we have the alternative, very old blow described in 1989, the fascia iliaca block. Many years we have said it's a three, three in one block, but not really. Now, yeah, I would say, do you really need a ultrasound guided? If you have it, yeah, it, you will localize precisely the, the space. But we, we have done it very, very long time with a double click technique, uh, uh, filling first through the skin and then the S to click with the fascia lata and then the fascia iliaca and then a high volume 30 to 40 milliliter of local anesthetic will result in a diffusion to the femoral nerve. Sometimes I would say in 50% in the, to the lateral femoral cutaneous uh, nerve and exceptionally to the obturator nerve, but very exceptionally because the branches of the obturator nerve are much more on the median side and, and very deep. So this one is as good as a femoral block when we see the literature, uh, sometimes better due to the diffusion to the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Um, and I will encourage you to give this block when you have a needle which are not so sharp that you can feel the uh, different fascias, it works definitely good. But it's a high volume block. Uh, it's uh, one of the facial plane blocks we will speak about later today. So, when you have ultrasound, you can uh, give this block very easily. Don't forget that you don't have to give the uh, local anesthetic between the fascia lata and the fascia iliaca, but under between the uh, fascia iliaca and the iliopsoas muscle. Remember, it's very, very important. And then you will have diffusion. You see it here to the femoral nerve, and it will perhaps diffuse on the other side externally um, to the uh, satellite muscle, and then perhaps to the branches of the femoral cutaneous, uh, lateral femoral cutaneous. The lateral femoral uh, cutaneous nerve block is very important block because it will it is pure sensitive block it will block the uh, um, sensation the um, the sensitive blocks of the lateral side of the tie uh, so it's very important to consider this block combined to a femoral and we'll see later combined to the new peng block uh, this is the position of the probe if you want to give it uh, uh, ultrasound guided. Ultrasound guided, you will first, I recommend to localize the uh, femoral artery, the femoral nerve, and then the probe, you go some more lateral till you see um, the satyrus, and then at the uh, external uh, side of the satyrus, you will see a small pocket, and the small pocket contains mostly the two branches of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Okay, this is not very difficult. And we have done it many years without um, ultrasound. So it's also possible to give it without ultrasound. 
you see here the landmarks two centimeter medial two centimeter curled up from the anterior superior iliac, uh, iliac spine you will insert the needle you will see is feel a pop which pierces the fascia later and if you give 10 10 milliliter 6 to 10 milliliter lidocaine one percent for instance you will obtain quickly a very good sensitive block of the lateral uh, uh, side of the of the tie. So remember the combination with a femoral block of uh, a fascia iliaca block with a, a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve block is very good for the anterior side of the tie still under the knee and don't forget for the uh, uh, lower limb for the for the foot surgery ankle surgery um, that you will need also the saphenous and the saphenous is a branch of the femoral nerve uh, when only, only for the ultrasound guided uh, a block this one can't be given with landmarks uh, some since many years we give the adductor canal block the adductor canal block is quite easy to perform with uh, ultrasound it's growing more and more uh, uh, given every day in uh, surgery uh, it's a volume uh, block 15 20 ml when you give more you will get a moderate block due to um the anesthesia of the of the femoral branches so uh it's an easy facial block in the hunter canal that was the old name so uh at the middle of the tie you will uh, see the femoral artery and at the external uh the lateral side you uh, will see a triangle this triangle is your target when you give a block here you will see and you will see also the uh, saphenous nerve so it's a very interesting uh, block also to anesthetize to block the uh, the certain uh, the saphenous nerve so recommended to block at the level of the uh, mid tie it's uh, the best way to get a good good block because the diffusion will be to all the sensitive branches of the femoral nerve and once again if you give too much it will diffuse to the femoral nerve and then you will get a, um, a motor block now i would like to speak for, about the peng block the peng block is uh, a described or uh, uh, dr peng that's his name and then the 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 it's it's his name but it's also for pericapsular nerve group block uh, it's a very very interesting block i think i give it a lot here uh, but it's only worth ultrasound guided um in hip fracture trauma it will give a bit now we say within 15 20 minutes a very good pain relief it's quite easy to perform it's very safe it's much better to the uh, compared to the facial iliacal block and the femoral and the femoral cutaneous nerve block 20 milliliter local anesthetic and i will recommend to combine this block with a lateral femoral cutaneous uh, nerve block uh, to perform surgery when you need only a pain stealing effect you uh, uh, a pain killing effect so uh, you can give it alone if you want to operate the patient combine the two blocks um it's quite easy you will see here you will plus your prop and uh, normally you try to localize first the the femur head when you see it you go some more uh, uh, safely till you see the typical image of the anterior uh, iliac spine the uh, then you will see the iliopubic eminence the femoral artery and you will see a very very bright image of the psoas tendon it's precisely the place of the needle 
between the bone and the, um, the psoas uh, uh, tendon. And uh, you will see this tendon going up with uh, uh, some hydro dissection first. When you are at a good place, you can give 20 milliliter of local anesthetic. It will work definitely very, very good. Then um, a little bit more difficult, I would say, but very, very important block as the, uh, um, the sciatic nerve block. You see here the distribution of the uh, sciatic nerve uh, to the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, to the uh, peroneal uh, nerve, the sural, the uh, superficial peroneal nerve, and the deep peroneal nerve. So, but don't forget the saphenous nerve for this part, uh, which is still depending on the femoral. Uh, Without ultrasound, we are back to the very old-fashioned Lebet technique. We have given this blocks many, many years without any problems. So I would say if you have a long needle, it can be five to eight, 10 centimeters deep, 10 centimeters deep in, in, in obese patient, but it's not the case in, in Myanmar. So uh, I will say with a five to eight, to, uh, to eight centimeter needle, you can give a good block. So um, two different uh, uh, possibility of you mark here the great trochanter and the posterior superior iliac spine, the uh, midline, and then four to five centimeter under. Or my preferred method is to localize here the, pos uh, the posterior superior iliac spine, the uh, sacral hiatus the greater trochanter, two lines, and then the midline, the cross point with the line going from the sacral hiatus to the greater trochanter is the insertion point of the needle. The needle need to be inserted perpendicularly to the skin. And if you have stimulation, you will see a, a, a movement of the foot, other movements are not good, or the patient will feel paresthesia in the foot, then you can inject 20 milliliter anesthetic. It will be more than enough. Don't forget pain at injection when you are working uh, with landmarks is a very import, so important sign of intraneural injection. So when the patient is feeling a lot of pain, please move your needle a little bit and it has to be easy. Then only with ultrasound guided, you have the sciatic nerve at the subluteal level. Uh, yeah, I would say um, between the uh, greater trochanter and the um, um, iliac tuberosity, you will see the nerve, but you need to be trained. So it's not, I would say, it's not a very easy nerve for uh, uh, for beginners in ultrasound-guided anesthesia. So I just have to speak about it, but I would say, okay, it's only for trained anesthetists. Uh, much easier when you have an ultrasound is a growing interesting uh, uh, approach of the sciatic nerve. It's the anterior approach with ultrasound-guided. Uh, you will see here at the uh, front side, um, at the upper side of the tight, you will see the femoral artery, you will see the femur, you will see here the sciatic nerve. So it's a very, very, very interesting. Uh, just under the uh, um, adductor magnus, you will see here the nerve. We give it much very frequently since since I would say one year, and we are very very happy with the, uh, this approach of the femoral nerve. So when you have ultrasound guided ultrasound, you can give it once again. You will see the femur, you will see the femoral artery, you will see here the, um, the adductor magnus, and just under you will see the femoral ner the sciatic nerve. Then I would say this nerve is very popular, but only with ultrasound guided. 
the sciatic nerve at the popliteal level, the popliteal block. So don't go too low because if you go uh, with your ultrasound just under the knee, you will have the uh, tibia, the, per the fibula and uh, peroneus uh, part separated from each other. So you have to go some higher and then you will see it will become one nerve, the sciatic nerve. It's much easy to give the block some higher, eye to 10 centimeter above the first localization under the knee. Then when we go distally, when you're very good at ultrasound, don't uh, you can give all the different ankle nerves uh it's not so difficult when you know the anatomy so you have here the tibial nerve the tibial nerve is at the uh, middle side of the ankle you will see the artery and the vein and just um, under the uh, the tibial nerve it's very big one it's very very easy then the deep peroneal nerve is at both side of only at the middle side of the of the artery here at the front side just at the foot here then very important but not so easy the superficial superficial peroneal nerve and when you are very trained you can find the sural nerve here And the saphenous nerve is at the uh, lateral side of the saphenous uh, vein. But I would say if you, I, I will go back to my uh, slides. Uh, if you give an infiltration with inner volume around the ankle, you will have also a good uh, uh, anesthesia of the foot. So, when you are trained, when you have an ultrasound machine, you can try to give this block ultrasound guided. But don't do so difficult. In you, if you infiltrate all the ankle, you will have a good block for the foot surgery. So. This was the first part of this lecture. Um, so once again, uh, giving a block for a, a lower limb is not always very easy. When you begin, uh, uh, you can use very easily the femoral block, the fascia iliac block, the femoral cutaneous, lateral femoral, femoral cutaneous block and the sciatic block with the labat technique. So you have now enough tools to give a correct anesthesia of the uh, lower limb with only a needle at some local anesthetic. When you have an ultrasound machine, you can do some more. But once again, my lesson as uh, one goal is to teach you basic things and not very 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 high tech things uh, now you are in in very difficult situation so you need to know how to give the blocks as we did 20 years ago or 40 years ago perhaps so now i have to speak i promised you to uh, speak about the 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 facial blocks the interfacial plane blocks they are very important. They are much very popular. They're becoming really very popular. And some of them can be very interested for you. Um, so there, they are very, very different blocks. They are truncal, abdominal, and, and uh, under uh, different fascias. Uh, we have seen the fascia iliaca block, which was the first, which has been described in 1989. And then the transversus abdominal plane block, the tap block, has been, has been described in 2001. Uh, 
since 2010, we say we are working more and more with ultrasound uh, uh, machines. So we describe uh, every year or every six months a new block. Are they all interested, interesting blocks? I don't think so. So uh, I would say keep it simple. We will have a look now in the only very interesting blocks. I want to speak about the, 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 the last described blocks because it's not relevant for this teaching for now. Uh, it's still studied. There are still a lot of publications about the real efficiency, the real efficacy of these blocks. And as I, as I said, all these blocks are not successes. So um, you need to know some little things about uh, the anatomy of the facial blocks. Uh, we uh, have the three fundamental facial cognitive layers in the human body, the superficial fascia, the deep fascia, and the muscle related facial layers, which are very important for us. So the deep fascia is independent of the underlying muscle separated from it, but the uh, ecmesium and the layer of loose connective tissue. So all the fascias are not the same. They're all specialized in uh, different uh, in anatomy and function in all the body. It depends on the number of layers, facial function, and the different uh, uh, facial relationships with the surrounding organs. So it's not something you can really standardize. Um, action mechanism, how does it work? Uh, uh, we have a lot of studies uh, published about the, the, the action mechanism of facial blocks. We know that there are nerves in, uh, in these interfacial uh, uh, spaces. Um, some uh, uh, studies suggest the innervation both A and C fibers. Uh, and there is also a notion of uh, uh, dynamic range uh, neurons. So we don't really know how it works. We know that it works. Um, so we have also observed the mechanoreceptors, the ruffini and the vatapachini. Um, so it's more complex than we uh, think, and we don't really know how it works. It's perhaps also some studies say that it doesn't really work. It's only the diffusion um, of the local anesthetic and the resorption in the blood which works. So um, it's still under study. It's still given, but uh, some of them are very interested, interesting, but we don't know anything about it. So uh, why is it so popular? Because it's safe, because it's quite easy except some of them it's not so invasive and it can be performed in a shorter time frame but don't forget that i miss sorry i miss my uh, uh, last one uh shorter time time frame it yeah it, it can be very fast to give the block but then you have to wait 30 minutes till it works. So which blocks are actually performed? We have the triangle blocks, pectoralis blocks, the pecs, very popular, the serratus anterior blocks, very popular, erector spiny plane block, we will speak mm, some more about it today, the retro laminar block, I will speak very fast about it. Then we have all the abdominal blocks, the rectus shape block, the trans the tab blocks, ilioinguinal block, very short about the quadratus lamborum blocks. And then we have the lower limb, fascia iliaca, I spoke about it, adductor canal, I spoke about it, so we won't come back on those ones. So it's very important to understand the anatomical region to know how it works, to know your anatomy, um, what is how to position your needle, what for volume, what for concentration, and management of the eventual complication. We spoke about it uh, uh, last time. So 
it's very important to consider that the uh, facial plane blocks are high volume blocks. You need some concentration um, to uh, have a good block. When you need a lot of volume, you can try to lower your concentration. You can use adrenaline, which is highly recommended in these blocks, uh, robivacaine, when you have. Uh, you have to be aware of the higher intoxicant, intoxication risk because these blocks are more um, cause of higher resorption and you can have easier uh, 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 toxic uh, um, complication. So, yeah, you can lower the concentration to keep volume, but too low concentration won't work. So in those blocks, when you need to give high volume, it's highly recommended to use some adrenaline. <laughs> about the adjuvants, I spoke last time about the adjuvants as clonidine, dexmethamidine, magnesium, dexamethasone. Yeah, perhaps it's interested, but we need much more studies about it. So we know that dexamethasone IV works as good as in blocks. So, uh, yeah, if you have it, use it IV. And yeah, I would say that the adjuvants in those blocks are not very, very, uh, um, uh, um, has never proven any efficacy. The only one uh, could be the Depomedrol, um, which, which could work. So, um, about anticoagulation, except for the QL block, for the quadratus lumbar blocks, it's not a contraindication to give those blocks single shot. Yeah. So the triangular plane blocks, these are a lot, a lot of different blocks we can give from the uh, 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 parasternal blocks, to the serratus anterior block, to the spiny plane block, the paravertebral blocks, and the uh, retrolaminar blocks. So there are a lot, a lot of possibilities to give blocks for uh, 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 at the trunk. So uh, here you can see that the innervation, uh, um, thoracic innervation, is very, very complex. Uh, you have a lot of different nerves innerving all the thorax. So here you see that all the details of the uh, muscles. And I would say the most important blocks are the pec blocks, so the pecs one, the pecs two, which can be combined in one injection. When you go here, you see the probe on the patient, you will go down and you will see the uh, thoracoacromial artery, which will be the first landmark to give some volume here between the pectoris major and the pectoris minor, 10 milliliter, and then you go on with your needle at the contact with the fourth rib, to give 20 milliliter. It means you will have a good pec block in one injection, the combination of the pec one, pec two. And you see here, the artery and the nerve, and then you go down contact with the fourth rib and you give the rest of the volume. So it's very, very important to uh, give these blocks in breast surgery. Uh, then you can combine it also with a serratus anterior plane block, which is only the anatomic continuity of the of the, the um, of the pex two. Um, if you go more lateral, you will see here the uh, serratus the serratus muscle. So you can give your uh, injection. Uh, 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 at the level of the fifth rib, just above or under the serratus muscle. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, sometimes it's, easy to, it's easier to give it just under the serratus muscle, just contact with the uh, fifth rib, and you give 20 milliliter. So it will give combined with the pecs, 
it will give you a very good anesthesia of the uh, um, of the breast in uh, breast surgery also for a rib fracture for instance uh, it will give a very good pain relief so remember you can give here the pex1 pex2 and then you go more lateral and you can give the serratus anterior block then the erector spiny plane book. This one is gaining in popularity. We give it more and more in very different indications. Uh, so anatomically, uh, it's not one muscle. Uh, as in there are a lot of small muscles forming the, 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 the erector spiny. So just I will go on here because it's not very really relevant for today. So uh, it's just not one muscle, but it's just bundle of muscles and tendons, and uh, it runs vertically. So you will see here the anatomy. When you give it, it will be precisely here. So it's also a block we'll see that you can give only with the landmarks. It's not a block yet you need. Uh, if you have ultrasound to give it, it's better, but you don't need ultrasound uh, uh, to give this block. Uh, so what will happen when you will inject uh, 20 to 30 milliliter uh, you will get a diffusion from your local anesthetic to the paravertebral space. And within, I would say, 30, 45 minutes, you will get a very good diffusion to the paravertebral space and a very good uh, anesthesia. And then the diffusion, if you give too much, could be to the epidural space. So be aware about it. If you give to high concentration, to high volume, you can get an epidural with, uh, at a thoracic, a thoracic level, which could be, uh, uh, um, which could give a, a, a low blood pressure. So where do you need to give your block? It depends on uh, uh, what you want to reach. So mostly for thorax surgery, we give it yeah, T5, T7, but you can give it also for abdominal surgery, T8, T10. So you see here, when you go very high, you can give it for a, a shoulder pain. Then you go to T5, T8 for all rib fracture and uh, to T5, sorry, for rib fracture, thoracotomy, thoracoscopy, uh, rescue after thoracic epidural failure for some cardiac surgery, sternotomy, breast surgery. Uh, so it has a lot, a lot of different indications. When you go lower to T8, it will be very uh, interesting for nephrectomy, hysterectomy, for some laparoscopic uh, surgery. Uh, don't forget some surgery, you have to give it a bilateral. And then lower lumbar L3, uh, yeah, it's very important, chronic myofascial pain syndrome, uh, vertebral surgery. So erector spiny plane block is a very, very interesting block because it's easy to perform. It has a lot of different indication. You can give it uni of bilaterally, laterally, and it will definitely work. So I would say you can give it with ultrasound or only of, uh, uh, on landmarks. Uh, these are here the direction of the needle. You will see here that it will diffuse in the paravertebral space. The needle goes in contact with the uh, uh, transverse process, and then the injection will give a diffusion uh, in all the um, space. Also, this 
advantage you can give this block in all position, sitting, lateral, prone. So when you have ultrasound, you begin externally, laterally, you will see the rib, and then you will go to the medial side till you see this image of the coastal transverse joint and you go some more immediately and you see the typical image of the uh, uh, flat deck, which is the, uh, the goal here, just at the top of the uh, um, transverse process. Then you will approach your needle. You can approach it in plane as here, but also very easily out of plane, arriving like this, with bone contact, it will be precisely the same. And sometimes when you give it with ultrasound approaching uh, in plane, it's not very easy to see the needle. So when, when you are a uh, sometimes beginner, it's much easier to give it out of plane till contact with the transverse process. And when you inject, you will see here the local anesthetic spreading just under the spiny muscle. So don't forget here the rhomboid, trapezial, trapezius muscle, spiny, and then you give your local anesthetic. So of landmarks, it's also possible. There is some Indian teams who published about it. They gave it up landmarks and then they, they took the probe. And you can see that the diffusion is as good as uh, um, with ultrasound uh, machine. So you have here the spine, three centimeter medially. You will get the uh, introduce the needle perpendicularly to the skin. And then you will have bone contact. Then you stop and you inject 20, 30 milliliter, and you will have a good block. So remember, the actual spiny plane block can be given very easily without the person guided. When you don't know how to give an epidural, and when you don't know uh, what to do, when you have a high risk patient, it's perhaps better to try first to give an erector spiny plane block. Very fast about the retro laminar block. It's a good alternative to erector spiny plane block. It seems promising, but we need more studies about it. It's the same, but it's some deeper. You have to go here in this space. So, okay, just to speak about it, but not so important. So then I won't speak today about the paravertebral block because we are busy with basic things and the paravertebral, paravertebral block in your setting now is perhaps not the most interesting block you have to give. If some of you are interested in uh, this block, please message me and we, we, can, we can speak about it uh, next time with only people really having some expertise in those blocks. So very also very important all the blocks, the abdominal facial plane blocks. Uh, these are Brooks described uh, more than 10 years, 15 years ago. There are very different type blocks depending what you want to reach, what you want to do. Uh, the goal is to give enough volume between the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominalis uh, muscle. You can give it at very different level. The subcostal tab blocks, for instance, for uh, 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 for cholecystectomy open, the lateral tab blocks, the posterior tab blocks, the rectus shed block, and the ilioinguinal nerve block. These are the most 
perform blocks at the abdominal level. You will see here, so you can give it with a, 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 a notch up needle while filling the different fascias, but it's not very easy and you can reach very easily the abdominal cavity. So be very careful. Please perform it when you have ultrasound. Um, so the goal is always when uh, using some hydro dissection to localize the space between the uh, internal oblique and the uh, transverse abdominals. You will see here diffusion of the uh, liquid of the local anesthetic. First, begin with normal saline to localize the space. So you can choose where you want depending on the gore on the surgery. These are all different images. You see here for uh, upper abdominal, lower abdominal, medial surgery. I come back here, sorry, I was too fast. Uh, you see here for the uh, uh, rectal sheet block, you can give it here, you can give it here, you can give it very uh, bilaterally with one shot between the two fasci of the rectus sheet, and it will work. And then very important to know when you want to uh, um, do a idioinguinal uh, uh, um, rough repair, the hernia rough repair, you can give anesthesia very easily to these two nerves here. And then the QL block, the creditus lumbar block. I would say you will see a lot about it. I will keep it very, very short about this block, the creditus lumbar block in 2023. Is it still recommended? I would say no. Yeah, you will find publications and papers about it. It's a deep block for trained anesthesiologists. It can be sometimes very difficult to localize. In Bilbao, at the European Society of Regional Anesthesia 2019, so they said too many complications. Is it really useful? It is not. So, and finally, the credit to number and block does not provide super post-operative analgesia compared to systemic lidocaine. Very interesting. That's why I said at the beginning, some studies, especially in Japan, they don't believe in the real local effect of those blocks. They say it's the diffusion, the systemic diffusion of the lidocaine which work. So, the interest for the facial plane blocks is growing, definitely growing. We give more and more. Uh, yeah, it's a question of decision. Uh, which block to perform, you have to choose uh, with different factors, the desired area of coverage, the available uh, sites of ultrasound uh, pro-placement, or uh, if it's possible to give these blocks with only the landmarks, um, what would be the extent and the intensity of the uh, sensory, sensory loss? Um, yeah, it depends on a lot of factor when you want to give those blocks. Those blocks won't will never be will never be as good as a nerve block, and for abdominal and thorax surgery, it will never be as good as an epidural or for the thorax as a paravetable block. It works, but it won't be 100% coverage. Okay, and then you can't use so much adjuvant. So after uh, 12, 12, uh, eight to 12 hours, it won't work anymore. Uh, you can insert catheters, but catheters are volume depending. So uh, yeah, it's not, not the... Uh, um, the best solution for you is only for single shot with anesthesia, general anesthesia. So I would say it works, definitely, it's very good, but don't forget 
it won't be a 100% block. So well, it's also very interesting uh, in patients with coagulation abnormalities, when you can't give any epidural of spinal anesthesia, then it's very interesting because you can give it, except for the quadratus lumbarum block, you can give these blocks um, in compromised coagulation uh, uh, pro, uh, patient. Uh, don't forget that you need volume and concentration. So don't forget that you can, uh, you may use adrenaline and don't lower too much the concentration of local anesthetic. And the uh, systemic resorption and the systemic toxicity is a real risk. So you have really to be aware of the maximum concentration you may use. And we are aware here, for instance, that we, we combine a lot with lidocaine IV. So when we are planned to give those blocks uh, postoperatively, we stop our lidocaine IV. So this was a lot of this time. I'm just out of on call with uh, 24 hours uh, working. So perhaps I there's been some shorter as last as uh, last time. Next time we will take some more times. So now it's time for questions and discussion. Thank you, Xavier. I think if we can discuss. We, yeah, we can discuss, no problem. Question, 